today we're going to be talking about momentum trading. And momentum trading is a great trading strategy for trading Forex, cryptocurrencies, commodity stocks. It's great for short term trading. Now, CFDs are short term trades. Most CFDs are closed within 24 hour period. Now you can keep a CFD open night after night after night. But on the average, most CFDs, a CFD has kind of replaced the word day trading. Because day trading means you have to, you have to close it during that day. CFDs are short-term trades. You know, the market didn't move the way you expected yet, but you still expect that CEO to get arrested tomorrow. So you, your CFD stays open till you close it. But we're not concerned with the real, actual, real-world value of that company. We're not looking at breaking down the assets and the of that company and its debts of that company and the value in its sales, because that's going to give us an investment value. It's going to tell you what that stock should be worth or should be trading at. We're only concerned in, in CFD and short-term trading is where that value is, where that asset is trading now and where it should be going in the short term. If it's surged up for some reason and it's higher than we expect it to be, we only care that it's going to drop back down to that 100 today if we're going to sell it. We don't care that it's really worth $104. You know, because, yes, over the next six months, it'll probably average out on it. We're only concerned with where it's trading at the moment to where it's going at uh, in the short term. And so we're looking for assets that have momentum. Momentum is very important or assets that are losing momentum. Say for instance here, we see this asset that's steadily climbing. Now you have to understand how trends work, okay? Because this is good, this is good. Now people freak out when we see this, but that's good, this is good. These are retracements. Assets do not climb in straight lines. The markets don't move in straight lines. A market moves in a push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. This is a sign of a strong trend and it's ma maintaining its speed and its momentum. So when the asset eases down, we're not looking at a loss of momentum. We're looking at it taking a breather. So what exactly is momentum trading? Momentum trading is a strategy in which you open trades only in the direction of strong price trends, capitalizing on continuous price action and exiting before a reversal. Now, that sounds real easy, doesn't it? If it was, we'd all be rich and going to the bank tomorrow. A momentum trader does not necessarily concern themselves with where a trend ends or begins, but instead focuses on the opportunities from the main body of the trend. In the, this mindset, traders may buy high only to sell higher. That's what we want to do. Now, I, I use some stories with traders. The first is my story of the hamster in a cage. I don't know, when I was a kid, everybody wanted to have a hamster. You know, there's some phases where everybody gets goldfish. There's other phases where everybody gets, you know, this is besides having your dogs. And these are your personal pets you kept in your little bedroom. Well, there was this big thing on hamsters. And they'd buy this cage with a water bottle in there and this little wheel in the center. And this hamster would spend his whole life in there. You know, once every couple of days, you clean out the cage, put him fresh water, give him food, and watch him spin on that wheel in the cage. Well, when that little hamster steps on that wheel and starts moving round and round and round, I don't even know why they do, it takes him a lot of work to get that wheel moving. But once he does, it's spinning so fast, he's almost walking. It's easy because the wheel has gained momentum. 
Now, at some point, he's going to get thirsty. He's going to take his water. He's going to lose his energy. And that wheel is going to start losing momentum. Because he can't just stop that wheel. He doesn't have the strength, doesn't have the energy, doesn't have the ability. So the wheel's got to lose momentum first. So if we can gauge when that wheel's turning enough that the momentum's almost on its own, and if we can gauge when that momentum stops or starts to cease, not when you stop the wheel, when that momentum ease, we don't see any little tiny feet, but there's some point in those little tiny feet start slowing down. Well, that's where we want to trade. We want to trade as it's going higher and before it stops turning lower. Now, while momentum trading follows short-term trends, it should not be confused with trend trading, which refers to longer-term trends. Trend trading is really for much longer trading and much longer positions. Trend trading or trend following applies to macro asset classes only, and it ignores the short-term fundamentals many momentum traders watch closely. Now, momentum trading is the ability of a market to maintain its price direction, increasing, then decreasing in momentum as the price tends to grow, slows, and eventually reverses. Trends in price action can be sparked by fundamental events like earnings, reports, world reports, or simply caused by herd mentality like GameStop short squeeze in 221. But it can also be affected by central bank action, economic reports, and headlines. Now, momentum trading works if you believe in sustained market trends. A quick glance across a few charts usually reveals that they do indeed exist. Upward price swings can last for several days or weeks, and a short squeeze can draw for an even longer time. Now, let's go back to my little drawing on price. Now, price only has three ways it can move. Price can be going up, price can be going down, or it can be going sideways. Sideways doesn't mean it's going here. Sideways means the market's just congested, making no sense, going up and down, up and down, up and down. Doesn't mean this price isn't higher than that price. It just means it's not climbing steadily and it's not falling steadily. And most of the time, markets spend their time in congestion. They spend their times moving sideways. There are certain times though, When the markets move from completely random behavior to what we call non-random behavior. And this non-random behavior is things that we can interpret and apply tools to and make trading decisions. Now, as nicely as I've just drawn this, this is actually what you'll end up seeing on your chart. A market that's gaining momentum as starting to trade or trading in a trend, not a trend line, but starting to move in an upward fashion or a downward fashion. Looks pretty, pretty. It's noticeable, it's intelligent. Because now what happens is the markets are moving in non-random behavior. They're making higher highs and higher lows, or the opposite of making lower highs and lower lows. Now we have all types of trends that are not, you could have price moving this way, but the market is overall moving up, but it's totally unintelligible. Or you can have qualified trends. Now, what we get is somebody buys in the market, somebody else buys in the market, somebody else buys in the market, somebody else buys in the market, Somebody else, all of a sudden you got lots of people starting to buy for whatever reason, we don't know. This is all human nature. And our markets are huge. You know, we have bankers, investment brokers, you have everybody buying in this market. So these are guys that are buying down here because they think the market 
either had bottomed out from when it was moving down or it had been sailing sideways and they think it's time for it to start moving. Now what happened is these guys are big traders, big investors, big banks. They, they got lots of cash. Well, they're not going to lose money. They're not going to be in the market if it turns down. Now, if the market doesn't start moving up, they get out, they get out of their position, they walk away with a couple million dollars, a couple hundred thousand dollars. But if it does what they want it to do, it starts catching the eye of all the investors out there. And all those investors out there start jumping in the market and start that momentum surge. At some point, that asset's moving up, 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 and it's gaining speed and it's gaining momentum. It's that hamster in the cage turning round and round and round and round, gaining that speed. Now, at some point, we don't know exactly where it is. These guys who started all this, okay, now these guys don't get, they don't believe in letting winners run. They know when they enter the market what profit they want to make. What level are they going to exit the market? They've already set up their exit strategies, their, their sell orders to get out of the market, not because the market's moving against them. Okay. You got in here, up here, you've made yourself, you know, your 30 points, you've made yourself a couple million bucks. You're out, you're going home to the wife. As these sell orders start manifesting themselves and filling themselves, the price eases it down. Also what happened at the same time, these buyers who were jumping in the market saying that price is too high, it's not interesting to me anymore. As the market eases it down because it's filled all those sell orders, those buyers who moved to the sidelines, ah, we're starting to get into an interesting price level. I'm gonna, you know, I'm a buyer at that level, and they start buying back in. So do all the little guys following them, and we get the next wave of that move. Now, it forms push, forms that ease, that push again, that ease, that push again, that ease, that push again. Okay. Now, if we could measure that speed of that move and the momentum behind it, we could track that so that we could see when the momentum was easy. Now, however, there are never any guarantees that the trend will continue. Trading momentum leaves you at risk of reversals and price corrections. The strategy requires clo close attention to your trades as a stall price can cause sell-offs sell -ups that quickly snowball into reversals. While momentum trading may seem to favor short-term traders, it can also be a long-term strategy. I don't look at long-term strategies. I don't. My investing is completely different. It's all in my 401k, and you know, I want long-term investments with steady growth. Position trading is often used to refer to to long-term momentum trading, while swing trading is used for short-term momentum and day trading. While not always based on momentum, momentum trading can work for all trading styles if you use proper indicators and stick to your strategy. Now, momentum can be determined over long periods of weeks or months or within a day, day trading timeframes of minutes to hours. So let's talk about this. We have Let's talk about this in lines of transportation. We have the high-speed train going from you know, DC to New York. Okay. We also have a bus. We also have a car. And then in New York, we have subways. Okay. All of these 
transportation methods are moving. But as we know, a bus, we can pretty much slam on the brakes and stop it on the dime, not on the dime, but pretty quickly. A car, we can stop almost instantly by slamming on the brakes. That subway, we can. It's too many cars, too many people, too many elements moving too quickly. So that subway needs to be slowed down much earlier to be able to stop in that, in that station at, without throwing everybody you know, off the tracks or throwing the train off the tracks. Okay. So that means if somebody jumps on the tracks, they can't just stop. That's momentum because that subway has momentum. Now that high speed train, I, I I've heard locomotives with, with you know the old fashioned long locomotives carrying lots of cars with lots of you know you know container cars moving tons of some of them take six miles to actually stop. Because if they try to stop any faster than that, it's gonna knock the cars off the track. Somewhere in those, each one of those is losing momentum. If we could see where it was losing that momentum, because the markets just don't have the ability to stop on a dime. They can't slam their brakes like they do on a car. They can't slam their brakes like they do on a bus. There's somewhere between a subway car, a high-speed train, and a locomotive. You can see when that momentum is waning and when they're trying to stop. Now, we don't know where they're trying to stop. We just know that the speed is slowing down and the momentum is waning. So the first step traders customarily take is to determine the direction of the trend in which they want to trade using one of several momentum indicators available. They may then seek to establish an entry point or a buy or a sell point that the assets are trading. They may also want to determine a profitable and reasonable exit point for their trade based on projected and previous observed levels of support and resistance. Now imagine support and resistance are the subway stops along that train. So that driver's moving towards somewhere he's stopped in the van and he knows where he's gotta be slowing down that train to make it. Now, sometimes he might be an express train going right through that subway stop. Sometimes he might be a local train, but not going that. But he still has to slow down because he can't fly through without, you know, killing people on the edge. You know, it's a. Okay. So these are the support and resistance levels that are going through. Additionally, there are recommended to set stop loss orders above and below their entry points, depending on the direction of the trade. This is in order to safeguard against the possibility of an unexpected price trend reversal and undesired losses. But momentum is the key concept that has proven valuable for determining the likelihood of an interesting trade. Measurements of momentum can be used in the short and long term, making them useful in all types of trading strategies. Several technical trading tools are available to reveal the strength of trends and whether a trade on a particular asset may be a potential opportunity. Now, momentum is volume. Momentum can be used as a measure of volume in the market. The more people buying, the more people selling an asset, the more momentum as you have. Now, you have to understand a couple things about volume. You know, if you were as old as I am and brought up in the old days where all we had to trade were stock markets, where you're actually buying and selling a stock. You could trade in the commodities market to buy and sell and some odd metals, but you're trading those on contracts. And everything was going through exchanges and things were moving a lot slower and they were straightforward move. Volume was easy to see and maintain because you would know because every share being traded, bought and sold, on a stock on the New York Stock Exchange was being recorded. Every transaction going, and you could see the exact number of shares. If you're trading, a, you know, agricultural share commodities, you were trading whatever in Chicago boards, you could see every contract was being seen. Today, 
creating is a little bit faster and more muddy than that. For instance, Forex, there is no centralized exchange. There is no way to see how many euros were traded today. There's no way to see how many euro dollar pairs were traded today. Just isn't possible because there's no centralized exchange. Even gold traded today is traded in so many different fashions that it's hard to make any sense. Yes, today you can still see how many actual contracts were exchanged in the Chicago Board of Exchange. You can still see how many Apple shares were traded on the New York Stock Exchange through Apple. But otherwise, you can't say cryptocurrency is completely decentralized. And so much so many assets are being traded as derivative products, you kind of can't make any heads or tails out of it. So volume, though, is a very important factor. Because volume tells you exactly what's happening in the marketplace. It's independent of price. So the assumption is, and one of the reasons you want to trade with larger brokers is the volume provided on the charts from the brokers are the volume coming from major liquidity providers. Because the, vo the brokers use liquidity providers to send all the trades to, who in effect kind of can be thought of as an exchange. Now, The volume reported on the charts isn't reported by the broker. It comes through a big charting service, but it's a combination of all these liquidity providers. It's assumed and it's been tested, but the assumption is the volume shown by the liquidity providers is has a direct relationship to the actual real world true volume. So if we see volume soaring on our charts, even though it's not tied back to the physical Euro US dollar being changed, that volume is a is actual enough that we can use it. So we have to be aware of that. Now Extremely high volume and extremely low volume are very problematic. But as an asset is moving and maintaining its momentum, we should see a steady increase in volume. If volume is not supporting the price move, we need to say, uh-oh, 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 because that would be one of the keys that momentum is losing out. So if momentum reaches an extreme high, the asset is considered overbought. If the asset, the momentum reaches an extreme low, the asset is oversold. Now, we're talking about in volume. We're not talking about because RSI or stochastics reached an overbought or oversold limit. When momentum reaches an extreme low and then rapidly advances back upward across the zero line, the signals a buy, when momentum reaches an extremely high and then rapidly low zero line, then a sell. So how do we use momentum indicators for trading? Now, momentum indicators are different than volume. Momentum trading is largely based on pure price action and is not fundament, a fundamental element of why price is moving in one direction or next. If we're looking at momentum trading, we don't care what's caused this movement. I don't care what Trump said today. I don't care what happened in Ukraine today. I don't care what happened in Qatar today. I don't care what OPEC did today. Okay. Now, personally, I care, but for my trading, I don't. All I'm looking for is an asset that has momentum moving in a specific direction. In other words, I'm looking for that locomotive that's left DC, headed to New York, pulling 
a hundred cars that has gained that rapid movement is hit is 50, 60, 70 miles an hour that I know we can't just stop on the dime. Now, we have some very good indicators that will help with that. MACD is a very good indicator because MACD is a momentum indicator. It gives us a lot of other things, but it tells us the momentum of the market and tells us where it has strength and where it's weakening. However, moving averages always lag behind price. This is one of the problems with most indicators. Most indicators are lagging indicators. So they're already reporting to you what the market has done. So we combine we can combine that with things like RSI, which measures the strength of the current movement over recent periods. The aim is to show the likelihood of whether the current trend is strong in comparison to previous performance. Kenny just asked me, which ones are not lagging? Well, there's only a handful of them out there. And let, let's reason this out. Every indicator uses only has five pieces of data it can use. Doesn't have to use all five, but there's only five pieces of data that an indicator can use. That is the open, the high, the low, the close, and volume. Now, that's not saying they use all five. There's some indicators that use the low and the high for a, a time frame. There are some that use just the close. But because all indicators then take those numbers and then crunch them together, combine them with some mathematical statistical formula, they're in reality all lagging because to get the final number in their numeric equation, they got to wait for the markets to close, that time frame to close. So there are very few forward thinking indicators, leading indicators they are actually, because they're trying to predict what's gonna happen tomorrow in the market. They're trying to be crystal balls. So to that event, the difference between a moving average and an exponential moving average, and now the newest, newest of that displaced moving average is trying to move the lead or the lag time to almost lead time. So one of the reasons most people use EMAs as opposed to MAs is EMAs are have a lot less lag than an EMA. Now the new DMA displaced moving average actually is one of the few predictors of the market because it will show you the next time frames ahead. No, Kenny, I just explained it to everybody. Almost all indicators are lagging. Okay. There are ways that you can use mathematical formulas to turn them into forward thinking, but there's very, very few. Then we have stochastics. Back to my indicators that help you with momentum trading. Stochastics oscillators compare the current price of an asset with its range over a defined period of time. When a trend line in the oscillator reaches oversold conditions, typically a reading below 20, they indicate an upward price momentum is at hand. And when they reach overbought conditions, typically reading and above 80, they are indicating a downward price. But they're not telling you when price is going to change. When an asset and an indicator becomes overbought or oversold, they're telling you that the momentum is lost and the market could be overbought or oversold, but it's not telling you the market's going to reverse now. See, that's the thing about momentum. It's not telling you the market's going to fall. The market could regain momentum. Let's imagine you take a firework and shoot it into the sky. That firecracker, the firework goes up, 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 up. 
because what? It's gaining momentum. At some point when it travels high enough, it's going to start losing momentum. Now, there's a lot of factors here because we think it's really easy. I will see it up. It's going to hit that four, you know, high as that four story building and it's going to start easing back to earth. But in reality, you have wind shifts, you have temperature changes. Okay? Because, say, you thought it was going to go up and you said, oh, look, it weighing that momentum a little. It's going to turn to come back to earth now. But it got caught by a, a wind gust or some wind channel. Or for some reason, the sun was reflecting off that building and the air got a lot warmer up there. So it got a le little easier to move up. So it continued moving up. So losing momentum isn't the same as turning back to the ground. It happens before. We only get concerned when it starts to lose momentum. We want to be out of the market. We're not looking to top out the market. We're looking to ease out of the market. So one of the best ways that we combine a lot of things to look at momentum and combine volume is an on-balance on volume. This momentum indicator compares trading volume to price. The principle behind it is that when trading volume rises significantly without a large change in price, it's an indication of strong price momentum. And if the volume decreases, it's understood as a sign that the momentum is diminishing. So you have it all put together in one indicator without having to look at volume, without having to weigh momentum, without having to look at price. It's put all that together mathematically for you. Then we have what is a squeeze momentum indicator. A squeeze momentum indicator, otherwise known as TTM squeeze, is a measure of relative volatility. It's a combination of two other indicators, Bollinger Bands and Keltner Channels. When the Bollinger Band is within the Keltner Channel, that represents a period of low volatility. By comparing volatility patterns and directional momentum, the squeeze momentum indicator can help traders anticipate sudden volatility in a particular direction. So momentum trading is a popular topic in the trading world. According to the efficient market hypothesis, it shouldn't exist. Nevertheless, it impacts, its impact are pervasive, and many Wall Street elites have adopted it. So we can combine things like stochastics and MACD into a trading system. We're getting two different pieces of information about the speed and the momentum of the markets. And when we're looking for entry points, the crossovers of histograms or a combination of several indicators can help us see where the market is starting to gather momentum. The thing about momentum is we want to get in when the market, that hamster's got the wheel spinning, and we want to get out as soon as he starts moving a little bit slower. It may be that it's moving a little bit slower because he wants to drink a water, and then he's going to continue on because the bottle with the drop is right there, or it might be he's just tired out. So one of the most interesting trading strategies of all the strategies I outlined and talked about I've come across is the weighted selection. One, they are not focused solely on the strength or weakness of the trend. The strategy tries to help us capitalize on the strength of the price action change rather than following the trend blindly. For instance, the Williams percent R strategy informs you to check the length of the candlesticks to gauge the robustness of the momentum behind a price change. In other words, the biggest, bigger the difference between the open and the close, as opposed to looking at price, 
the open and the, the high and the low, as opposed to just looking at the body of the candle. Simplicity and equitability are everywhere. You don't need an advanced trading interface to apply these strategies. But before implementing a strategy with real money, it's always essential, essential to test it out on a demo account. There's always room to tweak and fine tune the strategy by diving deeper into technical indicators used. And always use risk management. Always know where to put your stop losses and always know where to put your exit indicators. So what we want to do is define a, a trend, not a trend line, but to define a trend movement. Look for bold candles. Wait for the momentum indicator to get oversold or overbought. Place your protective stop and then take your profits. So momentum is a key concept that has proven valuable for determining the likelihood of an interesting trade. Measurements of momentum can be used in short and long term, making them useful in all types of trading strategies. Several technical trading tools are available to reveal the strength of trends and whether a trend on a particular asset may be a potential opportunity. However, traders should be forewarned that momentum projections are customarily calculated using measurements of past price trends. Actual momentum and price changes at any moment are based on events that weren't factored into original calculations. So don't trade with only moment indicators. Use your eyes. Understand the price. Read the price on your chart. Look for that momentum when you look for that firecracker turning back down to earth. Don't rely on some guy sitting next to you saying, oh, at 492 feet and 50, you know, 492 feet and 13 inches, it's going to come back to earth. No, use your eyes. Make your own decisions. So that's all for tonight, folks. And as I said earlier in this class, if you want to see a recorded version of tonight's class, you can do so by using the same link used to attend tonight's class in about 24 hours and see if, uh, the recorded version of the class. So thank you very much and have a great trading week. And thank you for supporting Alvexo. And if you do have any questions, go to the Alvexo site and just use the live chat button. You'll be talking to somebody in our office. They'll be glad to answer your questions. Bye now.